Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We do have um, the questions that you can add to the chat. And then um, some of these slides, if you were with us last week, will be review, um, but I wanna make sure to cover all important information in our town hall tonight. Uh, remember that if you um, see something in a slide that you want to remember, and you don't wanna have to go back to um, Parent Square to find it, um, you can get your um, phone out and maybe snap a picture of that slide so that you have it easily to refer to. So our back to school night is scheduled for September 2nd. And um, we have several things in place to make it a safe um, in-person event. So masks are required at our um, in-person events inside the building. And um, we also are asking that families stagger the time that they come in. So we have four different times for starting. And we would ask that you would come at the time assigned by your child's, your Robert Frost student's last name. So if your student's last name is A through F, you're gonna come between five and 520. G through L, five, uh, sorry, yeah, it's G through L, 520 to 540, et cetera. Um, and that will just help us keep fewer um, bodies in the building at one time and allow for lots of distancing. Um, the things that are available at our back to school night will be the big teacher reveal. That's probably the most exciting part for most families. So you'll get to um, see who your child's teacher is. You'll get to go inside the building and meet with that teacher. Um, fourth through fifth grade students, you'll get to drop off your supplies in your classroom if you have those already. Um, and um, um, we'll have a path through our building so you can visit all, the, all of your kids' classrooms if you have more than one. Um, and then we'll um, head you into the gym where we'll have information. Um, so there'll be food services and bus driver to answer some questions, volunteer information, et cetera. So um, the office will also be open and that's gonna be the last part of your tour around the school for back to school night. Um, and in the office, you can check to make sure you have paperwork turned in. Um, you can make sure that you have, if you have medications to drop off, that would be a great time to do that. Um, and for kindergarten through third grade um, families, um, you can pay your supply fee um, at that time if you would like. The next bit of information is for parents of kindergarten students. So the first week of school is different for kindergarten students, and this is across all of our district schools. Um, all kindergartners will come on September 7th with all of their siblings and friends who start on the 7th. But on September 8th and September 9th, kindergartners will not come with everyone else. Um, your kindergarten teacher will call your family and schedule an assessment appointment. And those appointments last about 30 minutes um, and they're one-on-one. -on -one, so just you and your child and the teacher would be, um, will be in the room. And then um, after the appointment, um, after all the appointments have been scheduled on the 8th and the 9th, then all ki the kindergartners come back that Friday with everybody else. So it's a little bit of a different schedule for kindergarten parents, just to be aware. We're trying to get the news out. So if you know friends um, of kindergarten, um, sorry, friends of your family who have kindergartners, please share that news. We're trying to get it out in the whole district. Um, let me see. So the next piece of information is that um, the district is having, the high school is having the homecoming float parade. And so the um, October 1st is the date for that. And the theme this year is Silverton Family Story Night Fairy Tales. So we're gonna hopefully create a Robert Frost float, um, fairy tale themed. Um, but we will need volunteers to be able to pull that off. So if you are interested in chairing that or um, helping with it at all, if you could please email either me um, or call the school um, and give us your contact information. Um, 
October 1st isn't actually that far off for, for putting together a float. So we're really hoping that we um, will be able to have an entry for Robert Frost this year. Other new information that I promised last week that we'd have is arrival and dismissal information. So um, our arrival time, um, actually, let me start with our bell time. So school starts at eight o'clock this year and dismissals at 2.30. Um, but students can come in as early as 7.30. And we have choices of recess if you're early or um, you can go and eat breakfast and then head out to recess. Um, we'll have kids in classes by 7.55 so that they are all backpacks put away and um, hands washed and ready for um, school to actually begin at eight o'clock. So um, if you're dropping off your kids and I'll talk about the map in just a second, but if you're dropping off your kids or they're walking down, um, you probably want to arrive around between 7.50 and 7.55 um, so that kids can go right into the classroom unless you want them here for breakfast or they, um, it works out better for your family to drop off at 7.30 for some recess time. So um, on the picture here on the map, we have our um, bus loop this year, which is different. This is where parents used to drop off in the previous years. And so um, on the map, you can see that buses will be coming in here um, and exiting and so for parent drop off or pickup, you'll be following the yellow arrow path um, and parents will drop off or family members, friends will drop off in the covered area right in front of the school. So um, just some things to be aware of. The red X's are driveways that we would um, really request that you do not block with your vehicles. Um, so if we could leave those open so buses can get in and buses can get out and our custodial staff and maintenance um, have this um, second driveway open and not blocked, that will help us. Um, and then for arrival in the morning, we'll just make one line here to drop off. Um, but for dismissal at the end of the day, we'll have a double line here. So two cars wide um, and we'll pull up about, we're, we're kind of working out the details, but we'll pull up about six cars, um, double wide, so 12 at a time. We're hoping to walk kids out to you, make sure that they can get into cars safe, and then we'll let those go, and the next ones will come up. So um, watch for, um, I mean, as we kind of work this out, um, this is the plan, we'll adjust if needed, um, but we're hoping that we can get more cars through more quickly, and we don't end up, um, backed up all the way down Westfield to Safeway. So that's our, that's our plan for this year. Um, and if you have questions about that before school starts, feel free to just come drive our driveway and kind of check out what that would really look like or at the back to school night, think about what that would mean for your family. Um, we have um, a job posting for Robert Frost and I wanna share with all families so um, we have a need for someone just to come in for our recess times and help monitor recess. Um, so we have a two hour job for recesses right in the middle of the day from 11.15 to 1.15. Um, so if you would like to work at Robert Frost while your kids are at school here, um, we would like you to apply. So I'm actually gonna, um, as soon as I'm done talking, I'll drop that link into the chat so you guys can um, click on it if you want to go directly to that job posting. Um, but it's also on the um, Silver Falls um, School District website um, if you look for employment and it's a two hour position at Robert Frost. So I encourage you if you're interested at all to apply or call me and ask questions if you wanna know some more information. And we're hoping that that person will be able to start um, the first week of school, um, but we'll work on getting that filled by, um, probably by one of you. All right, um, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing and hand it over to um, Mrs. Leslie Kuhn for some information of health. And then we'll circle back for Q&A 
um, at the end of our um, time together tonight. So, I'm gonna thank you, Mandy. Over. Thank you so much. Um, can you guys see that? Okay, my slide. Okay, great. All right, well, hi everybody. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. I'm Leslie Kuhn. I'm one of the school nurses for the school district. And uh, tonight I'm going to highlight the health and safety protocols that you can expect to see in your students' buildings this school year. There are multiple proven measures we can use to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in our schools and communities. And our goal is to keep students in person five days a week this school year. With the current COVID-19 surge, um, it is critical that we layer these, mitigate, these mitigation measures um, to attain this goal. So we're gonna go through here and learn a little bit about them. Uh, first, I'd like to share where we get the guidance to use to implement these mitigation measures. We follow requirements and guidance from both Oregon Department of Education and Oregon Health Authority. And in addition, we have a strong relationship with our local health department, um, which is Marion County Health and Human Services and we must follow their guidance they provide. Our district is also following our county and city metric data weekly, as well as pediatric specific data provided by OHA. And before we dive into the protocols um, around health and safety, I assume everyone knows the basics of COVID-19 by now, but knowing the following basics will help um, us understand the why behind some of these protocols that are gonna be seen in our buildings. Uh, the first is that COVID-19 is mainly spread by droplets in the air that on average travel six feet before falling. It can also be aerosolized, which means the virus is smaller than the droplet size. And these tiny particles can travel farther in the air and, and stay in the air for longer periods of time. And then number two, a large proportion of cases have no symptoms. Mrs. Um, Cohn, did you advance your slide? No, this is just information. Okay, sorry, sorry for interrupting. This is just a, a side vent. Okay. <laughs> um, thank you, though, for checking. Um, the other important thing to know about COVID-19 to help us understand why we're having these protocols in place is that a large proportion of cases have no symptoms, but you can still spread um, the virus uh, even when you don't have any symptoms. And you can also spread the virus up to two days before any symptoms would show up in your body. So as you can imagine, this can lead to high community transmission um, if we don't have the preventative measures in place. So getting to those um, health and safety protocols. Um, so the first is face coverings. Um, masks remain a simple but powerful tool to protect against COVID-19 and prevent the spread of the virus. They're required for all staff and students while indoors, um, with the exception of during meals and playing specific musical instruments. If your student has a difficult time with wearing face coverings, um, I added a couple um, good resources online that I found, or you could reach out to your building principal um, and I'll, I can follow up with you about some ideas that um, I have. Next is physical distancing. Students will be encouraged to maintain at least three feet from each other throughout the school day. Um, and many buildings have floor markings and visuals um, that are up from last spring still um, to help remind them of this in the hallways and classrooms. So this next uh, health and safety protocol is very essential in helping us keep six students home. Um, this one's an important one. You'll be receiving a letter from, um, from the school here shortly that includes this flow chart. It's the can my student go to school today? You might um, if you're a returning Robert Frost or returning Silver Falls School District student, you've seen this before. It's been a little updated, but not much has changed. Um, but please refer to this flowchart every day before sending your child to school. And if your student has any of the listed primary symptoms or has been exposed, please keep them home and notify us. And a school nurse, myself likely, will be reaching out to you to follow up. And I'll help you determine the next steps. If your child becomes ill at school, um, they'll need to go home. Um, so please have a plan in place to be able to pick your student up in case this happens. And there are COVID-19 rapid tests available at each of our school buildings that can be offered to your student, um, but we'll need your written parental consent before uh, we administer that to your student. We follow isolation and quarantine guidance from ODE and OHA and our local health department for each scenario 
including students and staff with primary symptoms, positive tests, or exposure to COVID-19. Here are some other COVID-19 health and safety protocols you'll see. Um, hand hygiene, so hand, uh, hand washing will be taught and required at specific intervals during the school day. Next is ventilation. HEPA filtration devices have been placed in all areas that were found to have inadequate ventilation per our maintenance department's assessments. In addition, classrooms are encouraged to increase ventilation by opening windows and doors as long as it's safe to do so and to do outside learning as much as possible. Lastly is cleaning and disinfecting. Our schools follow our maintenance department's cleaning and disinfection protocols for daily cleaning routines and specific protocols for positive cases and exposures. So we know that being kept informed is important to you. You'll be receiving a letter from your school building, as I mentioned before, um, from nursing that includes information, um, including the daily screening. It will also, or the flow chart for it, and it will also include a list of kind of what to expect, um, kind of talking about these health and safety protocols again, and also a list of health and safety questions and answers regarding COVID-19. Please expect routine communication from your school throughout the year regarding COVID-19 reminders and information. You will also be notified if there's a positive case, um, a positive COVID-19 case at your student's building during that person's infectious period. If your student was identified as being exposed, you will be notified right away and before this general notification goes out and confidentiality will always be maintained. Finally, we plan to keep our district website up to date with COVID-19 specific information, including our communicable disease management plan, county and city specific data metrics, specific uh, school specific case and quarantine counts and COVID-19 resources. So thank you for your time tonight and all that uh, you guys are doing to help prevent the spread of COVID-19, um, which helps to keep our students in school five days a week in person. And if you have any questions, you can um, jot them down in the chat and we can get to them, unless you wanna open it up right now, um, Mrs. Pack, it's up to you. Um, and if you think of a question after the town hall, feel free to um, email Mrs. Pack and then she can um, connect us together. Okay, yeah. Um, why don't we um, go ahead and uh, Mrs. Kuhn, if you could just, uh, yeah, stop screen sharing. If you have a question, feel free to add it to the chat. Um, if you have a question you'd like to ask, I see um, Kirsten, you have your hand raised. If you wanna go ahead and ask, go ahead. Yeah, I actually had two questions. So the first one is, do you have any idea when we're going to hear about busing information? Um, not exactly. Um, I know it has to be soon. So as soon as we get a bus route, uh, our bus is routed, um, I will send that out in Parent Square. Um, you can also check the district website. Um, it has, as soon as it's posted, it will be there too. Um, so yes, as soon as we have that, and then um, I know that their um, Durham is planning on sending us at least one of our bus drivers um, for our back to school night to meet with families and answer questions. So as soon as I have it, you'll have it. Okay. Um, my other question was, I know that the typical quarantine period for COVID-19 exposure is two weeks. Do we, is there a plan in place if kids are asked to quarantine for keeping them up to date on their schoolwork? Yes. So um, while our focus is in-person instruction, all classrooms will have um, a digital classroom like they did last year. Um, we'll be using the same um, platforms, so Seesaw, Canvas, the things that you are used to seeing because we don't want any more changes right now. Um, but yes, um, it's not going to be the same as it was last year. It's not comprehensive distance learning. It will be um, more um, just, you know, practice so kids don't lose skills um, during that time. Um, and teachers will be able to update that every day to make sure that the newest assignments and practice are on there. Um, but it's not the same as it was last year. It will be different because the teachers are going to be in front of kids in their classrooms. Do you, is that, does that answer your question, Kristen, or you have a little bit more? No, that's helpful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. 
Sarah, I see your hand raised. Do you want to go ahead and just unmute? Sure, thank you. Can you um, uh, help us understand what the definition of exposure will be? So is it just if there's a positive COVID case in the classroom or is it more narrowly defined? Yeah, good question. Um, there is a really nice picture. Actually, I could probably pull up for you, but I can just explain it. So um, they have, I mean, exposure, a close contact uh, definition is within six feet um, of a positive case for a cumulative 15 minutes or more with or without a mask on. That's the CDC, OHA, health department um, exposure. However, there is a difference with our students in classrooms where if they are within, if they're three to six feet apart and they're all wearing masks, so the person who tested positive and those that are within three to six feet um, are also wearing masks, then they may not be considered exposures. It's kind of confusing. Um, that does not apply to staff though, or other adults in the building. So staff still need to maintain that six feet um, or they might be considered an exposure if there was a positive case. But with kids, it can be three feet as long as everybody's wearing masks and we have all those other mitigation measures in place. And how we figure this out is we, once we find out a positive case, we go to our attendance records, we look at that cohort, we talk to the teacher um, confidentially about seating arrangements. Um, and then we also have to follow, you know, if there's multiple cohorts crossing over, we have to follow where the cohorts cross uh, to find those potential exposures. And so we use building logs, we use classroom logs, attendance records, and then staff report to try and uh, nail that all down. And we also, with every scenario, we're consulting, nursing is consulting with um, our health department. We will not quarantine kids without the support of our health department. Does that answer it a little bit? <laughs> yeah, very much so, thank you, okay. that's helpful. And you would be notified, um, our, our goal is, notified um, you know as soon as possible from the report we say 24 hours but you will be notified as that's our biggest goal is to get those exposures notified asap all right anybody else with a question or anything in the chat Okay, um, so I just wanna um, be sure to say thank you to Leslie Kuhn for coming and answering questions and helping us tonight. We really appreciate your time. Um, what an awesome resource that we have for our district. Thank you. Super happy to be here, yep. And I also wanna say thank you to Mrs. Short and Mrs. Botaya for helping facilitate um, and the look at the chat for me. And I want to say thank you to all of you. Thank you for showing up tonight, um, for being willing to share your questions. Um, it's really important for me to be able to hear directly from parents um, the questions you have and how you're feeling, um, because you know you're not the only ones with those questions. Lots of people probably have that. So we really appreciate the feedback. It's very helpful for us as a staff when we're planning and making decisions. Um, just one last note before we sign off, um, there is not a town hall next Thursday night and because that is the night of our back to school night and we'll be here in person. Um, if you can't make it to that back to school night, um, I forgot to mention this on that slide that um, class lists will be posted that night and we'll leave them up over the weekend um, so that if you can't come, you'll be able to take a peek at our um, front doors near the office and that's where we'll post those lists so that kids can um, and families can see who that is, even if you can't come to our back to school night. But we do hope to see you at our back to school night and for the first day of school. And thank you so much for coming out tonight.